Life Care Ambulance is proud to be an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum. At Life Care, they wear their hearts with pride. Their passion is their people. They want you to love what you do and where you do it. Their employee-driven culture encourages a healthy work-life balance and supportive work environment. They invest in your success and well-being so that you can provide the best care for the patients that they serve. Join the incredible team of EMTs and paramedics in Memphis, Nashville, and across the nation today. Learn more at lifecareamb.com. Our top five guys who, if they're your teammates, Lang, yeah. whose hands are you putting the ball in for a buzzer beater? Who do you want taking that last shot? My number two is Kevin Durant. My number two is Steph Curry. Oh, I'm so curious who your number one is because Steph Curry is my number one. Well, my number one is Kevin Durant. Join Lang Whitaker and me, Kelsey Ray Johnson, every Thursday as we debate the hottest topics in the NBA. I am HO on GrindCityMedia.com, YouTube, and our social channels. Are we gonna leave a are we gonna leave a voicemail again? I guess if he doesn't answer, sure we'll try this voicemail thing one more time. Okay. Okay. Hello. Hello. <gasps> The plot twist of the century. Rob, you're awake. Good morning. Good morning. Tune in to Rise and Grind with Jessica Benson. Live daily at 8 a.m. on GrindCityMedia.com. Hey, here's your four grilled cheese double burgers. Enjoy your Sonic. So, could you ever overachieve something? Can you overachieve? No, over not overachieve. Overachieve. Over <laughs> What do you get when you combine two cheesy, craveable classics? The Sonic Grilled Cheese Double Burger. Made with three slices of melty American cheese layered between two 100% pure seasoned beef patties and held together by thick Texas toast. Try one half price when you order in the Sonic app. Exclusion supply. See app for details. Limited time only of participating Sonic drive-ins. HBCU Huddle with me, CJ Hurt, and Mike Wallace has all of your HBCU football, sports, and culture needs covered. We discuss the hottest stories weekly across the black college sports landscape, including the SWAC, MEAC. Tennessee State, Lane, Lamorne Owen, and all the black colleges in between. New episodes drop every Thursday, and you can stay connected with the latest stories and discussions about your favorite HBCU by going to grindcitymedia.com, selecting the podcast folder, and clicking on the HBCU Huddle tab. HBCU Huddle is a spot for all your black college sports and culture needs. Grizzlies fans know it's the team that gives you the edge. Big River Steel does too. That's why we're looking for team members to reinvent the steel industry, much like the Grizzlies are reinventing basketball. Our edge starts with you at www.bigriversteel.com. That's www.bigriversteel.com. Taco Bell has all the flavors you're craving. Your favorite melty, crunchy, grilled spicy flavors like tacos, nachos bel grande, quesadillas, crunch wraps, burritos, and more are all available when the mood strikes. Order them ahead on the Taco Bell app for quick contactless pickup in the drive-thru or get them delivered right to your door. Want more? Join the team and eat for free. Apply at jobs.tacobell.com today. Hours and participation may vary by location. Additional terms and fees may apply. Represent Every Day, presented by Delta Dental of Tennessee, is an incentive-based program focused on keeping youth K-6 through grade engaged in school in order to combat truancy. In partnership with Shelby County Schools and with the help of Delta Dental of Tennessee, the Grizzlies are focused on reducing chronic absenteeism among the most impacted schools in the Mid-South. Students in the program have the opportunity to win fun and unique prizes by going to school every day and being engaged in the classroom. For more information on the program, visit Grizzly com slash community slash education today. At Mountain Dew, we'd like to remind you that the world as we know it would not exist without the number zero. Which is why, at Mountain Dew, we'd like to recognize the number zero for making Mountain Dew Zero Sugar possible. Even with no sugar, it packs all of the bold citrus kick Dew Nation knows and loves. It's so good, you have no reason not to try it. As in zero. Get it? Crack open an ice-cold Mountain Dew Zero Sugar. It's Zero Sugar. All do. Live from FedEx Forum, this is The Chris Vernon Show on GrindCityMedia.com and the Grind City Media YouTube page. Presented by Caesar Sportsbook. Now, here's your host, Chris Vernon.
it's noon on GarageCityMedia.com. It's Chris Farnan. Show! Welcome, 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 welcome. It is a Tuesday, January 3rd, 2023 edition of the show. Today on the show, we'll have 10 things from, well, since the last time we spoke, which is a long time ago now. Hope everybody had a good Christmas holiday and a happy new year. As we are all back in the fold, and not only are we back in the fold, Gary Parrish is now in the fold. He will join us live from New York City at 1245 today. We'll give you 10 things from when we last spoke, and there is a ton to get to. Grizzlies are on a winning streak. They are now headed out on the road to play a few games against the Eastern Conference. It's a Tuesday. Is that the sun? Smile, let's do it. Turn it up! Hope everybody's having a good day. All right. Uh, we got a ton to get to. As I mentioned, there have been a million things that have happened since we last spoke. We will go through as many as we can today. And Gary Parrish is going to join us. For those of you that were unaware, it was announced uh, at the end of 2022 that Gary had done his last show on our former station, 92.9, as the afternoon host and was going to be moving over to Grind City Media in 2023. Um, Look, we started together over 20 years ago, I think it is now. (laughs) I mean, and we've been friends for that amount of time, so it goes without saying. I said what I said on Twitter after it happened. I, I could not be more elated to be back with Gary. We worked together for many, many years. We've been, he's one of the very few people I talk to daily. Um, and I'm so excited that he's going to be over here uh, for this year. Um, he's going to join us later in the show. But I mean, geez, it's been a long time. Like I, for, for those of you that uh, have been listening for the last couple of years or have not been listening, I don't expect any of you to have been listening for 15, 20 years. Um, when I first started, I was very, very young, and I hosted a show on WHBQ, and I had on that version of the show, Gary Parish Wednesdays, which was every week on Wednesday, Gary would come in, and at that time, he was the beat writer for the Memphis Tigers basketball team. This is during the Cal Perry years. And it was brought to you by Ledbetter Foods. Which, which is where his dad worked. And we were both in our young 20s. But we've been through a million things together, uh, both in life and career. And I, I could not be more elated that he's here. And so he's going to join us a little bit later. we got a ton of stuff to get to. We have not spoken to you in a long, long time. We have not spoken on the air to each other in a long time. Before I get to anything, I welcome John Roser to the show. John Roser, a.k.a. the Cologne Ranger, the Body Spray Bandit, Senior Sack, a.k.a. Johnny Backpole, Johnny Bearcat, a.k.a. the Grim Roser. John Asparagus, Johnny Netcarb, a.k.a. John Purdy. What up? Yeah, we back outside. <laughs> we back outside. Machine. Devin Walker's here. He is the microphone mangler. <laughs> Senor Quasadilla, Mr. Matt, Navajo Joe. He's the reporter. I know it's been a minute for like, even before y'all, like the last show of the year, I was gone. So it's like good to be back. Like there's new microphones that I can't destroy now. I love it. Uh, no, you can. CJ's already kind of destroyed this one. Oh, oh really? is that right? Yeah, yeah, uh, it's possible. Oh, okay, with well, GP, are you with me? GP's in the building. But you said we haven't talked on air <laughs> in a couple weeks. Yeah. But every day. Every day. Every day we've talked. Yeah, because we talk my girlfriend every day. says, because I'm in the bed like this at 6 a.m. <laughs> she's like, Who are you texting? I'm like, it's very nice. There's there's only <laughs> two people that Devin knows that are up that early in the morning, and it's us. She's like, who? Who are you texting at 6.30? I'm like, 
It's Vernon Rose. We've already we've already sent off like ten texts to the group. I was like, it's fine. <laughs> it's, it's fine. We're good. <laughs> it's happened. Kelsey Wright Johnson's here. She yeah. is Brampton's finest. She is the Nordstrom Rack Track Queen. She is Puerto Rico's favorite reporter. Yes, 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 yes. She. 2023, Eddie. I like it. Yeah, yeah. 2023. The year of the Eddie. All right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, shout out Vernon, though, bro. For what? These, these kicks, bro. Christmas gift from Oh, Al- this Al- is a I finally had to. You, you've been gone. Throughout yeah. Christmas, you were gone. You went and delivered us losses <laughs> on Christmas Day <laughs> in Golden State. You, you came back home with the funk on you, and we yeah. lost to Phoenix. Yeah. We finally well, had to get it right after a while. You know, if he yeah. could have gotten to see a win if he would have, you know, gone to the 49ers game with Job. Ja. Oh, for goodness <laughs> sake. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Nobody wants I to. Did. I was just step with a lot of homeless people in my time at San Francisco. Oh, oh no. Oh. They, they got a real problem going on real there. I've seen it. I've seen it. Uh, all right, we got to get to ten things. Let's do it. Ten things, ten things, ten things, ten things, ten things, ten things. Number one, unfortunately, this is the biggest story in sports, and it is intensely sad. And that is what is going on with. Damar Hamlin. We'd be remiss if we didn't mention this right off the top. Now, I have not seen a most recent update. The last I saw is that his vital signs um, were back and that he was still in critical condition, but he is recovering, that he had had cardiac arrest um, during last night's game. I think I can speak for everyone and say I've never experienced anything like that in terms of watching a sporting event. You know, when I was a child, Hank Gathers uh, passed away. Mm-hmm. I remember I remember uh, Reggie Lewis. Yeah, I remember the Reggie you know, Lewis one. And, 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 yeah. and, and things like this had happened, but not where I had had the experience of watching something and thinking, oh, my God. And you remember earlier, this is the second time this has happened this season, and it's incredibly scary. Remember when the two fencing thing happened yeah, and his fingers scary. were like that and, and we were texting back and forth like, oh my god, like what just happened? Is he paralyzed? Like we don't understand what's going on. And when you saw the intense amount of distraught on the faces of all of the Buffalo Bills and frankly everybody that was a part of that game, you knew something was terribly wrong. That this was not your Average. This guy maybe has been knocked out. This guy, you didn't know. And that's what made it all the more terrifying was this unknown. Like, what what just happened? Because he just collapsed. Um, so I brought the Florida kid, the Florida kid too, that collapsed on the court for four. Oh, that's kids. right. Deontay Johnson, I believe, was That's right, yeah. yeah. And, and so, but I've never been watching yeah. when when these things have happened, right? And And everybody is like, what happened? How does this happen? Like, there's just that that incredible unknown that has gone on as it's taking place. And, you know, kudos to the announcers and, and then Susie Colbert and Booger McFarlane and Adam Schefter that are having to talk about this back in the studio. Um, as a broadcaster, I cannot imagine the um, how hard that is because you are without answers, yep. and yet the scariest of all scary things is on the table at that moment and you see the stretcher come out you see the ambulance you see the players clear the field and then there becomes as as is the case with a tragedy then you know the the worst place to be probably is social media because that people start fighting each other mm-hmm. over yeah you know a, a tragedy which unfortunately in many cases can bring out the worst in people and you see what is and and nobody really knows what's going on or what's taking place and you're just praying for updates like just tell us that he's going to be okay and i do think that most people had the same sentiment which was just to cancel this game yeah, yeah. like how like, do you expect them to how this is a freaking how can they be expected to go back out there yeah. and and this isn't a in the absence of knowing, 
what was going on with the kid. Because, again, I, I know everybody says, like, we know what was going on. And, and, you know, it, nobody knew. No. Nobody knew. And, and we were. I think we were all in fervent prayer that, like, please tell us that he's – Back breathing, he's alert, he's okay. Well, they're showing video, even right now I'm seeing it, sorry, they're showing video of their teammates like bawling on the field. I know. Field. Like, then you expected them to... I mean, I, well, and yeah. because once once they came out and they had to do CPR on a guy, mm-hmm. that is something I have never seen in my life, ever. And they're, and they're saying like, what are you talking about they're having to do CPR? I mean, that's what you're, like... That is a life-saving tactic. You had to shock him, didn't they? Yes. Yeah. You I mean, saw, you saw li- Jerry Lawler they're... said it like as soon as it happened. Jerry Lawler, Lawler he did? He tweeted it. He said, I've, that's happened to me before. I know exactly what just happened. He said, that's happened to me before in the wrestling ring. Wow. He tweeted it before everything came out, like what's happening. What, that what's that happening? has happened to he him. Said, that's that same. It's, I know that reaction. Wow. Like, that has happened to me before in a wrestling ring. And I was like. It oh, was oh, petrifying. Yeah, it was to watch. So uh, Eric yep. McMahon you know, does the uh, the Cage Side Podcast, wrestling podcast with you, Devin. He uh, he also part-time referees minor league MMA. He showed me a video this morning of a match that he refereed, and it happened to a guy. The guy got hit, and it rattled him, and then he took two more shots, and he was st- and Eric jumped in and called the fight because the guy the guy was on his feet and he was still just wobbling. And then once he called the fight, the guy tried to take a step and just face plant it down. Terrifying. And I mean, what they said is that basically. Between that last night, what happened? Cardiac arrest from a blood Wow. To his chest. Yeah. I mean, he had to have his heart restarted on the field. Yeah. It could not have been more chilling. Um, and he instantly became the biggest story in sports. And the one great thing that has come out of this in this horrible, horrible story is this: that thousands of people then found his GoFundMe page and it has resulted in over $4 million being donated um, by noon today and that the number is still climbing um, with the amount of people that have donated um, and they have come with all kinds of messages of hope and everybody obviously praying that uh, and that, that number just will not stop climbing either. It's it's great to see all the people out there that have found that and that are donating to it. Yeah. And it is the one great bit of news that has come out um, because all the other news, it's it it's not what we're used to as sports fans, you know? And, you know, watching it take place last night, there's just no other feeling except for please be okay. Yeah, for real. Please let this be okay. And I think as we get to today, it's still the same, right? Please be okay. I hope it puts you to like a kind of frame of mind of like these dudes are playing a dangerous game. Yeah. There's people that see like football is just like a – they're just going out there to, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like, it's a dangerous sport, bro. It is dangerous. Okay. Dang, it's car crashes every single play. Yes. And anything that can happen. So It's, a, it's yeah, it's it's a collision sport. It's yeah. not like a, it's they're like it's, it's a physical sport. It's not a physical, it's a collision sport. Like, right. every play is a collision. Right. And there have been no updates as of today. No um, updates always good. Like, that's, you'd rather have nothing than... Right. Bad. I mean, they're saying, right, the, we, sta- we knew, like it, well, look, the, the vital signs was a great thing. To, you know what I mean? Like, that's yeah. what, that was the first thing, which was like, please, because they were obviously able to get him, I'm basically back alive. That's so. Bring him back now, alive, yeah. And, and here's now, hopefully, where the fight to regain his life can begin um, as he's in a hospital today and so I I don't know I, I can honestly say I've never seen anything like that it was chilling to the bone to watch that because it's never something that you're expecting to see because we watch a million football games I've watched a million football million games my, uh, my whole life yeah. and I've never seen anything never like that never um, and so prayers up for sure 
um, as we're going to continue the show today talking about everything else that's going on. I, I will tell you, I'm not doing anything else on the NFL because it is the only, it's the only NFL thing uh, that matters for sure right now is yeah. the health and safety of this guy. Um, and I'm praying that we get good news. Hopefully, you know, within the next couple of hours, there's more positive news that comes out about his recovery from this. You also just made Kelsey's day. Why? Not doing any more NFL stuff. Oh. I, was, I was just about to make a joke about it, and then I was like, reel it in, girl. You still got a lot no. of football news. Number two, uh, the Grizzlies. We watched a lot of NBA since we last spoke. Um the Grizzlies were massively disappointing and went on a losing streak. And then since we last spoke, we you know you just gotta give these things time. And luckily, we had a lot of time since we last spoke. Because um, God knows what our shows would have been. Oh, the, the uh, Golden that, State and Phoenix games. The, look, the Grumpy Grizzly sign would have gotten a mega workout. <laughs> yeah, he's retired right now. Though, right? For I was retired. grumpy. Yes, I'm not anymore. Going to those weekend games would have been like depressed as hell. Yeah. And and so, well, really, that Phoenix game, that was low. The home win, yeah. That was low. The road win, the road Phoenix game was, like, awesome. No, but then because the Phoenix thing, and this is what was made it so bad, was because Taylor Jenkins was saying what you were, what we were all thinking, which was, um, this has been five games of n- not performing up to standard, and the one Phoenix game was the blip and it was like, like oh thing. shoot you remember he said yeah, that yeah. he's like that 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 do you remember that real good game that you all felt really good about yeah that was the blip <laughs> we're like ah uh, hold on now <laughs> like it can't be like this yeah. and it just you know at, at any time as soon as you start getting on a losing streak it feels like end of times and, it, and you know what i honestly leading up to the Toronto game. You knew that there were this was going to be a massive moment within the season with the Toronto Pelicans Kings. That next stretch after they had played their worst stretch of the season. I mean, uh, look, not only were they getting beat, they were getting beat by yeah, nobody. Yeah, yeah. They were getting I- beat by Oklahoma City without Shea, Shea. Shea Gilders Alexander. They were getting beat without, you know, getting humiliated without on national Murray television by the Warriors Murray. without Curry, without Wiggins, without those guys, and then humiliated at home, no less. By Dwayne, what's his name? Dwayne, Dwayne Washington, Washington oh, Jr. Oh, God. Fred Van Feet. Fred Van Feet. <laughs> and <laughs> sorry, Marketing. Sorry, Marketing. Jock Lindell. Yeah, Jock Lindell. I had sorry, names for all of them. He did. Action, Action Brunson. <laughs> yeah, Action Brunson. Who was that? Isaiah uh, uh, Ish Wayne Wright. Ish Wayne Wright. <laughs> like, Action Brunson. Wine. Like, what is this? Really? And, you know, it did feel a little. I know that there was... They they went through that storm of Jaws comments, um, yeah. and the brashness, and then everybody goofing on them, and it was like, oh, you're fine in the West, huh? You can't even beat this team and this team and this team. And I do feel like there was that little stretch there where Ja felt badly like he needed to back up said comments. Yeah. This is the world of social media. This is the world of uh, the world we live in, right? Yeah. Where it's like. Oh, here's the guy, and then he's looking around, and like the the he's team the is not rose. the team is not playing yeah, he rose, well. Everybody else is like, right yeah, now. and then he got to Toronto and said, "Okay, that whole like me scoring almost forty stuff, like forget this. I'm gonna set the table for everybody." And he ends up with 17 assists yeah. in the game, and Kerr I think Hoffer. it really got them restarted. Regular season, Kerr Hoffer, Jay and you know what's crazy? Both. The Golden State game and the Phoenix game, which were the two most disappointing, for sure. Both of those, you know, my buddy is over at Shot Quality. Yeah. When they posted their, like, game scores, both of those were posted as upsets. And they said that based upon the shots that the Grizzlies got in those games, in both those games, they win those games. Yeah. And they just made no shots. They couldn't make anything. They couldn't make anything. And so, like, it wasn't like they were getting stopped from getting the shots that they wanted to get. They still got 
all the same shots they wanted to get. They just didn't make any of them. They didn't make them in the paint. And the other team made everything. Yes. They're missing everything. And so it was kind of like a perfect storm of crap. And then they got right against Toronto. And then both the Pelicans game and the Kings games, second half, mega impressive. I put more on the Pelicans game because the Raptors have been struggling. Like, if they would have lost against the Raptors, it would have been... Like, right. What the it's hell? Insulting. But the Pelicans game, I'm like, okay. Pelicans they game de- was They defended huge. Zion better than I've seen people defend well, Zion. And Zion know, had 20, but it was a hard 20. No, and listen to this. You're going to love this. Dylan, stats. Yo, <laughs> I, had this, I had this written down on my sheet. when. So it's three minutes into the second half that he gets his fifth foul. And then he gets a tech because he's mad about it. <laughs> and, the, and, the, and the fifth foul was ticky-tack. But it's going to take yeah. him out of the game until the fourth quarter. At that moment, three minutes into the second half, mm-hmm. Zion Williamson had six points on two of eight from the field and three turnovers. Yeah. <laughs> and then we had to put in Roddy, and they gave the ball to Zion every, every single t- time down the free court. Throws every time. Every time. And it made the game impossible to watch yeah. because it just made the whole thing disjointed. It was all half-court basketball. We run a play. You run a play stuff. Use those fouls, Roddy. Yeah. <laughs> Use those fouls. He was no shot at Roddy. Life, he, he did his best. I mean, he no. took a charge on him. He did. He did. Which, and they also and he were, lived to see another day. And they were also able to force some turnovers. I was, they did a great – that that is not – it's not a coincidence on the Zion thing. They do a great job. No. And part of it is because – a major part, and Brevin brought this up, the luxury of having a big wing, nobody can do that. Really, when you if you've got a big wing that can take that assignment, it enables the two bigs to still be back. And yeah, because Steve the whole game, Steve was saying like, "Yo, make him a passer. I'm going to try to make him a passer." Yes. So when Zion turns the corner, Steve was right here. And you know Zion's not a playmaker. Because he's you Throw know look, yet. he's like basketball Gronk. Yeah. In the sense <laughs> that Gronk is too big for your corners and too fast for your linebackers, <laughs> mm-hmm. and he's that, and so. How do you find somebody? And Dylan does a tremendous job on it because it enables the bigs not to have to do it. Everybody else has to use their bigs on well, it's it. It's also extra yeah. protection. And the bigs yeah. can help. Like, yeah, the bigs can help. Right. Yeah. And they so they did great. Them. I think the other day, too, I brought this up on post. I mean, I've watched Zion play several times this year. There is something the Grizzlies also do that I've never seen another team do. Dude, they do try to take charges on him. Yeah, I never see anybody else from other teams. Yeah, well, Roddy in front was icing his entire body yeah, after the yeah, game. No, he so. was. But I remember even the first time we played him when we killed him here. I don't encourage it. Yeah, no. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I tried I don't, to try to lay on that. The first game even when we killed him, Ja tried to take a charge on him. I'm like, yo, dude, get out of the way of that. And Dylan also tried to do it. Like they will try to take charges on him, and it's I guarantee you know that it's, it's something he is not used to at all. Like nobody wants to get in the way of that. Hey, Steve-O Just deserves like a little love, too, because these last two, last two games, he's been crazy. Oh, Steve-O's been out of his mind. Crazy. Out of his mind. doing yeah. the dirty work in the trenches, but he's yeah, still you, Yeah, so you're talking Dennis Rodman, Will Chamberlain, and rebounding he, numbers, crazy. Moses Malone. And like. he has emasculated Valanciunas <laughs> since the trade. Every time he does. We looked at stats last time, didn't we? We were like... Do you know oh, in the last him. five that they've played against each other... Valanciunas has averaged six and three. Yeah, There's just no way you could say that about anybody rebounds. else. Si- yes. Three six, rebounds? Six and three. Sir. Impossible. No, Steve is unbelievable. Yeah. And then they turn around, Steve is unbelievable against the Kings game. There's not as much from the Kings game, though. Yeah, the the the, the jitty finish off the no the look. look the <laughs> it's like yeah. that's gotta be on the end of the year highlights for sure. Um and Steve went crazy again and, and pulled down 23 rebounds. And then did his post game interview. Ridiculous. With Kelsey. <laughs> People were texting me immediately. The thing is, every time I ask him something like that, he always says, Oh, it's the system. So I tried to take the system away from him. You can't use this. And, he gave it back and then he just said, he, he, told, said. he told Kelsey. That the reason he was able to get so many rebounds is because we sucked at shooting. We shot forty five percent from the field that game. Yeah, but, I, but you gotta. And I meant to do this Uh-oh. after he said that, and I forgot to. You've got to extract the putbacks. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. We got to extract the putbacks from that. The the second chance ones. 
because mm-hmm. Yeah, you shot 100% on the, you know what I mean, in many cases. Yeah. You know, they made a bunch of those. Yeah. But what happened, w- did they actually miss a ton of jumpers and then end up getting it closer to the rim? <laughs> and then to, and that's how they made their shots. He might have actually been truthful in that. I'm not sure. In the end, the percentage ended up being okay, right? Um, I think we can look at. Yeah, how many, how many jumpers, how they did from outside the paint? In that game, I forgot to look it up, and I meant so to. So second chance points. Yeah, how many did they have? Six for eighteen. Not great. No, thirty-three percent. No, maybe so. Well, they sucked at shooting but there. Mr. Maitland, like That's thirty-three percent on second chance. But he was making Sabonis look like a child too, though. Like he was like grabbing the ball in one yeah, hand. Yeah, they have got to they've got to find some rim protection for yeah. the playoffs. It's like Otherwise, it's just going to be a feeding frenzy like it was for the Grizzlies. I mean, they're undersized. Yeah, they're undersized. If they go up, if they go up against they tried they tried real. the Rashawn Holmes thing for a minute, but I mean, in the absence of Holmes, like yeah, they've got to have somebody. Mm-hmm. They got to have somebody, so it's not it can't be a layup line because against a good team, it can just turn into a layup line. It can't. Yeah. Against them, they don't they don't have any rim protection. Bonus ain't blocking no. nothing. And and I love watching him though, man. He is one. I mean, he is a. He is a fantastic basketball player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he had like 18 and 14, and it's like crazy. That's when skill. you know. That's when you know somebody's awesome. Is when you look at the box score at the end, and you're like, "Damn, he had 18 and 14." You know what I mean? Yeah. I was surprised too. Like, I know Steve-O was the first player in history to have back-to-back 20 rebound games. Zebo never did that. I was surprised at that too. It's hard to get that. 20, bro. That is tough. <laughs> it is hard to get 20. I, I lot of rebounds. I remember Zebo because I, I was there for it. It was a Sunday afternoon game against Denver, and Zebo went for 30 and 20. I remember that game. I was there at that one. But yeah, back rebounds. to back 20 rebounds. A lot is of tough, rebounds, man. Yeah, a lot of missed shots too. Shout out Steve-O, man. He, a lot of people just see the screens. He said, like Steve-O is, bro. He creates a lot of extra possessions for that. I think I saw a lot of he. Like I think this, the Kings only had 14 offensive rebounds as a team. As a team. Am I making Steve-O. that up? How many? 14? I thought they had 14 offensive yeah, rebounds. 14 offensive rebounds of the team. Steve had 13. Like that's, wild. That's, that's wild. That's unbelievable. You know, one of the huge things. We I've, weren't I've shooting got, that bad. i got to find this number. One of the huge things about what is going on recently with the team is the ability for Jaron Jackson to stay on the floor. You know, he had gone through that small stretch, especially the Denver game, the Golden State game, and you see – how paramount he is to the Grizzlies' success and just his ability to be on the court. I went and looked this up this morning, not for, not for, uh, not because I was looking to see, uh, you know, league leaders or anything like that, but I wanted to go look and see, like, uh, on the net rating, right? Like, per 100 possessions, what is happening on the floor, off the court. Um, and so I end up in this page where it does have, like, the leaders uh, for mm-hmm. the um, for the NBA. And, like, number one is actually Jetty Osmond. He's got the best one in the league right now. Um, Jetty Osmond's, like, 11.4. And then you have some other guys, Derek White, Mitchell Robinson, and then you get into the Jokic, Dwight Powell. There's, there's a bunch of guys. D- Dylan Brooks is on this list. Conchar's on that list. There's a bunch of guys that have great net ratings, right? So, yeah, Jetty Osmond, who's number one in net rating, right? Like, what his team has done, offensive and defensive, per 100 possessions, when he plays, okay? Um, and that kind of stands to reason, simply because of their wings and their, their issue with the wings in Cleveland. Um, and he probably gets to be on the court a lot with uh, Donovan Mitchell and Darius Garland and Evan Mobley and... And uh, Jared Allen, that probably helps, right, when you're the other guy. Um, Anyway, so I went and looked at, like, the Grizzlies ones because I saw Dylan on there. And he does not qualify. He doesn't qualify because he has not played the amount of games. Jaron would be number one in the NBA. Wow. He's plus 12.2. Wow. What's Jetty? 11? Yes, 11.5. Jaron is 12-2. The Grizzlies, per 100 possessions, have outscored their opponents by 12 points on average when he has played. How many more games does he need? I mean, I don't know. Yeah, because they probably only play in the league that averages three points. It'll like, catch up. It'll catch up. Because, because you know, if you notice, he's not score. on the block leader list either. Yeah. He would be yeah. at the top of the block yeah. leader yeah. list because right. he averages yeah. three a game. But, I mean, he is 
he would be the number one player in the NBA you don't in score. terms of net rating. Because you don't score when he's on the floor. So <laughs> when you're going, <laughs> yeah, honestly. Yeah, the other so it's score. not just like us feeling like, oh, man, it seems like he's really important. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> like him being on the court, it turns them into who, who as was good it? a team as there is in the league. Yeah, who was it for the Kings? He found out. Who was it that, or was it the Pelicans? Who? Oh, we got blocked twice. Yeah, I got blocked twice yeah. in the rim, trying to run down the court on chair. And chair was like, Ow. quit it. And then the guy got it, went back and hit. No, I can't remember who you see it was. Their, you see that points in the point, uh, points in the paint uh, stat that they got? It could be the highest in the last ten seasons. It says with a twenty point point margin, points in the paint margin against the Kings on Sunday, the Grizzlies have now scored their opponents by twelve point seven points in the paint per game, which would be the biggest differential in the last ten seasons. Wow. I can see that. The numbers have been crazy. That is crazy. And then what, as Steve-O said in the post game, it all starts with Ja. Yeah. Yes. Right. Shout, and out, shout out to Ja giving a kid his shoes, and then people try to hit on that kid. And so told people the kid sold his shoes. They're just that spreading stuff lies. Is, that stuff is everywhere about this. the kid uh, sold the shoes. Like, no, he didn't. No, he went did. and got them wrapped. That's we nipped dude. it up in the bud. You would not bud. sell those shoes at a store. Dude. You would send them to an auction house if you're going to sell the guy, those things. The guy who owns the store, he, he went to high school with the Sneak Fest guys we did this morning, and... It's embarrassing that people yeah. would do that for clout. Because hey, whoever man. took that picture is behind knew. the counter. Yeah, no, they knew. They, no, knew. but the guy who posted that picture said, I wrapped these shoes for this young man. It was cool to look at And them. then somebody and they, and they reposted took, it they and said. They took the caption out. They took, they, yeah, they, they took, took the, the picture and said. They took the caption out. That's, That's why I posted it today. Why? With the, with what the is wrong with people, man? People like, they hating, man. <laughs> that was a great hate. moment. Yeah. So cool. It was great a great moment. And I think it's great that the kid went and wrapped them. He got them, like, whatever it is, like, shrink wrapped or whatever it is. You get them preserved. Yeah. You get them preserved. Smart. But then they took the picture and just. And I would also shit. suggest getting an. Uh, yeah, so for everybody out there, a kid did not sell the shoes. No. I would, I would try to go put those somewhere in a bank or a safe somewhere, or go buy a big time safe and put them in there. For those are size. They said someone offered him twenty grand, like at the store. The guy who did the wrapping. Hell he said, no. I'm just nah, telling nah. you, someone offered him twenty grand, and the guy, the kid said. Those things would go no. for seventy five to two hundred thousand on auction. <laughs> okay. I mean, no, but I think for the, I think the moment means more than anything. Yes. Yeah. Like no, that, you don't like, sell. Bro, those. he was sobbing, bro. Like. <laughs> oh yeah. <It's laughs> oh, he was hyperventilating. Yeah. Like, like he, bro. Yeah. So shout out to that kid. Shout out to John. Another good thing that I do want to mention because I saw NBA University posted this. Um, teams that are allowing the least amount of points per possession against ISOs. Grizzlies are far and away yeah. number one. We're working on the graphic about that right now, actually. Number one. Number two is Brooklyn. Three, Orlando. Four, Cleveland. Right. Five, Golden State. Wait, what's State. that? Allowing? My squads. My squads. Yeah. Allowing the least amount of points per possession on ISOs, on ISOs. right? So, like, I'm guarding you and mm -hmm. you score. Yeah. And the reason that that statistic is important is because that's what – playoff basketball can devolve into mm -hmm. yes can you score one-on-one -on -one? can you stop people from scoring one-on-one -on -one? unless you play the warriors well and it also it also it also <laughs> feeds, the ball pops it also feeds into the uh, uh brooklyn and how great they have how, how great they have become go next and how great they could possibly be in the playoffs when you can stop you know what I mean? Because other teams, look, superstars get the ball. Yeah. That's what happens when you get to the playoffs. Yep. Can you stop that guy? You know what I mean? It's Can you stop superstars from being superstars yeah. against you? And frankly, who has had the biggest games? Tatum and who? Donovan, Donovan Mitchell? No, against the Grizzlies. Oh. oh. Dwayne Washington Jr. <laughs> it's always, it's always like Dwayne Washington Jr. and Gary Trent and Bobo Malone. It's never. It's always Bobo Malone. It's never Zion. I I swear, I, I, or, I, or, you know what I, mean? I swear to God, I don't think Dante Divincenzo missed a shot on Christmas against us. Yeah. Yes. They're right. It's not. It's not Curry. It's yeah. Jordan. Or it's Poole. not Curry. Jordan Poole. Wiggins. Jordan or it's, yeah, Jordan. Poole. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Jordan, Jordan Poole. Poole. Put tire tracks on us. Jokic <laughs> killed us, but he kills everybody. He kills Jokic so. doesn't count. Yeah, yeah Jokic doesn't. Even Giannis count. has big numbers, but he hasn't worked for it. Yeah, like so, like you mentioned that stat. Like you mentioned teams like in the playoffs. You look at it, Milwaukee's second on the worst team guarding ISOs. Bad. That's the shocker because we talk about Bruce I know Lopez it. And Giannis right. And Chris Middleton. Yeah. Like Drew Holiday. Yeah. Y'all can't guard nobody. Yeah, with Drew Holiday. They have not I'm guarded sorry. anybody. I mean, the Lakers are number one. That's, that's not shocking. Me. It can't guard me. <laughs> 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 number three, 
Bowl games. All right, so congrats to Memphis for not only winning their bowl game and to Ryan Silverfield, winning their bowl game, getting a winning season, and winning me my bet with Justin Bean. That was awesome. <laughs> hey, also the second biggest margin in a bowl game, I think this season. I think that may be the right stat. Is that right? Hold on, I got you. Hold on. Oh, actually, 28-point win is the largest margin of victory for a bowl game in program history. Second largest uh, margin of a bowl game this season. So, yeah. Well, that's changed since LSU yesterday's LSU. LSU. Oh, is that the biggest? Yeah, the biggest. Oh. Yeah, so it's wow. sec- second biggest. Liberty Bowl was unreal. The yeah. Arkansas-Kansas uh, game. Bad beat for Arkansas betters. Bad beat, but. I left the game. I got to be. Oh, that's yeah, a bad Devin beat, left too. The game. That, look, that was an all-timer <laughs> for sure. 55-53. And Highest scoring Liberty Bowl ever. Yeah. Massive flashbacks to Memphis Houston with the 15-point lead. I'm starting to think the 15-point lead is the most dangerous lead in football because not only did that happen in that game, I don't know if you guys were watching yesterday, USC went up 15 on Tulane. And then Tulane came back and went touchdown, safety, touchdown. The other two went touchdown, touchdown two-point conversion they went touchdown safety touchdown to get 16 and end up beating usc by one but that game was awesome regarding the local teams um tennessee with their win over clemson joe milton good for him man yeah good for him (laughs) i did not see that coming and my god clemson was in the red zone 700 times it could never score it was hilarious um alabama I think there was a big question of how much would they care. They cared all right. And uh, it was nice to see, you know, both Bryce Young and, and Anderson play that out. And then they crush uh, Kansas State. Mississippi State with the homage to Mike Leach with the pirate helmet. And then the homage to Mike Leach by covering in the most improbable way in the history of football. I had money line, so it didn't affect me. Hey, um, look at you. I know. I uh I just wanted to perform one Leach, last time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do it for Mike Because I know I saw Will Rogers like sobbing on the sideline. After. Yeah, it was. It, 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 the game was terrible, by the way. It was. Oh my god, unwatchable. I fell asleep. I literally fell asleep. That's a hard helmet. Too. The helmet was amazing. I fell asleep during the game. That's <laughs> how bad it was. I'm not kidding. Really? Wow. I mean, it was Mississippi State, Illinois. Illinois had like their three best players sitting out. Yeah, tough, it was, week for, it tough was weekend a, for the Big Ten, bro. Because Purdue got curb stomped too. Purdue did get curb stomped by an LSU team that was mired in rumors. I think <laughs> in uh, innuendo. So Illinois, they became the <laughs> only. <laughs> yes. Team. yes. Oh, LSU. Yes. Yes. Oh no. no. Kelsey, have you heard about this? Mm-mm. Type in LSU scandal on Google. Yeah, no. it's, it's like some Louisville basketball stuff. Actually, no. type it in like some sex yeah. parties going on with recruits. It, it was so bad that a player had to leave for the NFL draft. Yeah. They told him to go. You have to get away from here. They said it was at the SEC title game, too, right? <laughs> uh, you want to fight, fight a sex party in Atlanta? I think you probably can. Oh. Ace Posey Blake. In, yeah. Look, and they, like. They, oh, it's Snapchat stories. Hey, they won 63 to 7. <laughs> so. Hey, I'm motivated. I was a hey, shout out to Illinois football, though. Only team in the country to not allow three touchdowns in the first half of a game this year. Who cares? Bro, it's what? a great stat. No, it's Bro, not. It's, it's, some, or it's like in 21 points in either half. Or they whatever lost the game. Only, you don't even know the stat? It's something like that. Because, <laughs> but because they were one of three. They were Wait, one of three with, well, Michi- with Michigan and Georgia. Wait, didn't they lose? And Michigan and yes. Georgia both did. They Those both they lost. Both did. No, no, no. That's fine. I'm just saying. Dude, it's Illinois football. You take what you can get with it, all right? They lost when the did game. you start caring? <laughs> Go line eye. What? Shout out to Bielema. Shout, Shout out to Juice Williams. Shout out to Juice Williams. Juice Williams. I don't know who that is. Remember Juice Williams, the quarterback? Yeah, he was the quarterback. He's I have no idea who that is. Do you know who Chase Brown is? I have no idea. He's the one that sat out. He's running. No. You don't no, know anybody. I, don't know any, I know Brett Bielema. Huh? I know Brett Bielema. Jeff George. <laughs> and they lost their, one of their coordinators <laughs> to Purdue. Purdue, he's going to be Purdue's head coach. Well, yeah, you don't know his name either. <laughs> no. I think he's a black guy. I could be wrong about that. What is his name, Carl? <laughs> What's his name? Yeah, sir. He Greg doesn't know. George. He doesn't even know his Anthony. stat. No. He's interrupting the shout out to Illinois for, well, I don't know, or something. They did something. something. Hey, did something shout out good. to Illinois for doing something. Yeah. Exactly. It's <laughs> Illinois football. They lost the bowl game. Rosa, they lost the bowl game. Shout out to Illinois for finishing 8-5. and five. <laughs> 
Shout out. Shout out to Tell me the last line. time Illinois football won eight games. When Juice Williams was there? Probably not. Uh, lovey. Lovey, yeah, didn't have lovey, had, lovey had a crack. I think Lovey had one good season. Yeah. Look didn't, it up. He have, didn't he have one good season? Hold on. Yeah, look that up. Oh, right. Why are we talking about Illinois right, football? You ruin him. everything. <laughs> Truly ruins everything. Good job, Roser. Not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> lovey Smith. All right, hold no. on. No, lovey, lovey Smith went two and six, six and seven, four and eight, two and ten, and three and nine. Six and seven. Come on. Close That's close. not eight. That's close enough. <laughs> <laughs> Last Illinois. time Illinois had at least eight wins was 2007. They went nine and four with Ron Zook. Yeah, Ron. I think Juice Williams was the quarterback. Yeah, Ron. Number four, the national title set. All right. Just as we expected, Georgia versus TCU. Weird scenario because I think that, I don't know, see if you guys agree with this. I don't think either of them should be there (laughs) after watching those games. I think both the teams that are at home should have won those games. Now, Ohio State shouldn't have made a 50-yarder. That poor kid. He shanked that bad, Oh, my God. It's like on Madden when you press the thing. Oh, the worst. That was horrible. I felt felt terrible for him. Look, they should have gotten it closer for the kid. You can't trust a a college kicker to make a a 50-yard field goal. That being said, they blew it anyway. They blew blew that game, as did Michigan. Like, I don't know how anybody watched that Michigan-TCU game and thought anything other than Michigan's, like, been about to score every time. And they just and, turned and they, it over. And they turned the ball over. I, at one point, I went and looked. They were averaging like 13 yards per play or something. It was it was something crazy. Like, and they were losing, like, by a lot. And I was like, this is madness. Um, congrats to TCU. Look, they've done it. They've been that team all year long where you've been like, why are they in this game? Why are they doing Why this? Why are they here? Why are they here? Yeah, like <laughs> all year yeah. it's been like that. And it's usually them coming from behind. But that game got wild as it was playing out. Great to watch. Wild, uh, two insanely entertaining games. And we just never have blowouts ever. I, I, I non-blowouts, I mean. Yeah, non-blowouts. Right? There's always blowouts in the semifinal games. It's always an ass kicking. Yeah. But I really feel like the teams that lost, they could, they're kicking themselves the whole offseason. Where it's, I really think it should be Ohio State versus Michigan. Yeah. <laughs> After watching those games, I'm like, both of these teams shot themselves in the foot to and lose. It, if you go to the third down in the Michigan-Georgia game, or uh, Georgia-Ohio State game, if you go to that third down, everybody's killing Ryan Day for running for running the ball on first down. It's like, why are you running the ball? You, I mean, you had two timeouts and you just ran the ball. But you still had one timeout left, and it was third down, like third and 11. And if you watch it, Georgia does not have their guys on the field, like, set. Like, they're still bringing their guys on the field. They Ohio State still has a timeout left. They snap the ball, and every route that their receivers run all go to the sidelines. And the middle of the field is just wide open. It's like, you still had a timeout. Like, you could have run something over the middle of the field and gotten yardage and then called your timeout and kicked a closer field goal. And Go TCU. Yeah, Ryan Day, Ryan Day, uh, yeah. I wonder who we got tight. Hey, and I did. I felt so bad. Like, that, that felt what a disservice to not get it closer for that kid. Yeah. But, you know, that's one of those where those, that kid, you know that kid is – practice that exact kick yes and you know what it made it a thousand times worse that chris fowler and i'm not look chris fowler's amazing but chris fowler's like he grew up wanting to go to this school oh no <laughs> See, oh no he's, yeah the moment he's dreamed about over and over again oh my God. a chance to take his school 
to the national, and I'm oh, like, oh, oh my god, <laughs> Kelsey, have you seen the kick, bro? No. Oh, you, you it was oh, nowhere yeah. near. Oh, how did St. George a final field goal it attempt? Like, the ball just, went th- just look it up. It yeah. was it on my TV at home. Oh, I yeah, it is. It is. I heard the kicks Ohio- it into the mask. Guys. The Ohio yes. State radio call. Okay. Was- I have it here. Let me. Yo. The, the Ohio State radio call. Tough was- watch. <laughs> There's it. a snap. The hold. Uh, 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 George is gonna win by one. <laughs> <laughs> like, dude, I thought somebody hit it. Like, I thought somebody deflected it. How bad it was. Dude, it, that, that is ball just- all nerves. How bad Blair. you missed that. Here's the kick. Oh my God, we're showing oh, it on the screen. Kid. This is. I mean, <laughs> that thing is. Wait, is that? It's on the left. Oh yeah, it's past the John 316 three <laughs> sixteen side. It started left <laughs> and went oh, left. Oh no! He kicked it past John three sixteen. He, bet, he kicked it past John three. He did. <laughs> Yo, oh, Yo man. that's what he was aiming for. That John three sixteen. Did side. anyone check on him after the game? That's oh, so sad. Yeah. It really was the worst. It, I mean, you're just gonna wake up every day of your life and think about that. Well, every day. Is he a senior? I don't. I hope know. he's not a senior because he just gotta go. Also, you know what? His name was Ruggles. <laughs> Why'd you say it like that? Why did you say? Why you gonna say it like that? It's his name Ruggles. Ruggles. No, you're saying it. Ruggles. <laughs> it sounds like a, like a character from a movie that misses a kick. It really does, right? Like that kid needs to be like Jones or like Smith Thomas or Thomas or like yeah, uh. yeah Thomas. Not Ruggles. Or like, just, yeah, yeah. Like it's just so. <laughs> It's so distinct. They said on the on the broadcast uh, too. Oh, you remember the Ruggles kick? Like you you can't ever like walk around like you need it to be. You need to have a name that could be confused with somebody else. Yeah. Like, like oh, Michael Thomas. Like are you like nobody's ever gonna be like are you that Ruggles? Like everybody knows. I've never met anybody. I've never heard that name before. They said on the broadcast too. They said he only missed two kicks all year. Oh my God. Chris Fowler really set him up. Bro. No, he was like oh, wow. he's dreamed of this moment his entire life. Where he wanted to go to school at Ohio State, his dream school, his dream scenario, and it's like, oh no, the whole damn thing turned into a nightmare. He only missed two kicks all season, of course, long. and then it's wank. <laughs> John three sixteen, dude, it was so far that off. That thing started left and went further left. Yeah, poor guy. I'm I mean, sick for him. Yeah, Poor it Scooney's, stinks. Scooney to go to the to send his team <laughs> to the national championship. Oh God! Yeah, man. Because it just feels. I mean, and then Kirby Smart, of course, takes the time out. So you just got to sit there and think about it the whole time. Yeah, it does. Like the, the camera was like on his face, and he was like not looking good anyway. Like, too much. Like, That's it too like much. He was like stressed out. Yeah. That's the moment where that kid has practiced that kick a thousand times yeah. and has never kicked it like that. Yeah. I will say Ohio State's offense also started struggling at the one point when Marvin Harrison Jr. went out. Yep. That's when it, I mean. Sure. They and, and you know what? Kudos to them for keeping him out. Yeah. Because they said that, he, you know, obviously he wanted to go back in. And they're like, no. They're like, no. You're going to no. stay out. Yeah. No. You're too important to us in the future. Your yeah. future is too important. Yeah, you're. Yeah. T- yeah, he's gonna be a top. You he's gonna be a, a top it, half of the NFL to back, first though, right? round pick in another. Yeah, he's got to go back. He has to go back. Yeah. He's got to go back, yeah. and then he'll be a top fifteen pick in the draft. I really think it should be Ohio State, Michigan. After watching those games, yeah. I would love. I to think see so it. too. I would love to see it. But look, go Horns. Wait, is this how you do it? Did you choose TCU in our pickums thing? I did. I chose Georgia. Well, I didn't do it. Somebody else did it. For me. That's the Ohio Go State team that we expected to see, like against Michigan. Like they didn't get punked. Like they were there for it, and they should. And I should have known blew it. that Georgia line they went kept flying going. down. It yes. was down to four, and it. And By the time like, that game kicked off, it did, uh, it was at seven. And I'm like, man, all the smart money's coming in on it, this. They all waited till game day, and the Slammed Ohio it. State betters just flooded the market. Yeah, sure. They had it. Hammered the Ohio. I heard one dude who does the, the game with Stuff on the Pod, and he said, I factor in home field advantage for Georgia. I knocked Ohio State down a point or two after the Michigan game and the way they got killed at Michigan. And factoring in all that, I have it at five. I have Georgia by five. And the line was like six and a half. He's like, so if you want to know where I'm going with this. Line and the guy flying Ohio down. State, yeah. Line went flying down. Hey, when the natty for Desmond Bay. And it never got years. bought back up, which was well. And I, and I saw that it was like uh, I think this one opened fourteen. When I checked this morning, it was twelve and a half. Yeah. For the natty. Yes, twelve and a half. Georgia, twelve and a half. Yikers. So, Do it for Des Bay, man. So people were. So people. There's at least been some money coming in for right under uh, two touchdowns 
for TCU? Because I think I saw it at 12 and a half this morning. You can tell me what you see it at. But, I mean, that's a big number for a national title game. I hope it's not a blowout. It won't be fun. Mm-hmm. I mean, don't you think everybody's going to be rooting for TCU? Yeah. It, you never get a Cinderella story in college football, ever. And it really does feel like that. I know they're a, I know they're a Power 5 school, but TCU is not supposed to be here. No, they're not. You know what I mean? They're not supposed to be here. They, wait, yeah. would Georgia go back-to-back if they win? Yes. Oh, yeah, we're rooting for TCU, bro. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Lang Whitaker. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back with Gary Paris on the other side. Chris Farnes, show. In the last two years, Georgia has faced six top 15 teams not named Alabama. The Bulldogs have allowed 13, 3, 11, 13, 0, and three points in those games. Who wrote that? Let's this, give this credit. from the Bear, Chris okay. Felica. I love the Bear. He always puts out great college football notes. Bear poops. What do we call this? <laughs> Get your sports betting picks and trends with Rob Fisher, Lang Whitaker, CJ Hurt, and John Roser. The Odds Couple. Now live every Thursday at 10 a.m. on Grind City Media and YouTube. Taco Bell has all the flavors you're craving. Your favorite melty, crunchy, grilled, spicy flavors like tacos, nachos, bel grande, quesadillas, crunch wraps, burritos, and more are all available when the mood strikes. Order them ahead on the Taco Bell app for quick contactless pickup in the drive through or get them delivered right to your door. Want more? Join the team and eat for free. Apply at jobs.tacobell.com today. Hours and participation may vary by location. Additional terms and fees may apply. Represent Every Day, presented by Delta Dental of Tennessee, is an incentive-based program focused on keeping youth K-6 through grade engaged in school in order to combat truancy. In partnership with Shelby County Schools and with the help of Delta Dental of Tennessee, the Grizzlies are focused on reducing chronic absenteeism among the most impacted schools in the Mid-South. Students in the program have the opportunity to win fun and unique prizes by going to school every day and being engaged in the classroom. For more information on the program, visit Grizzly Grizzlies.com slash community slash education today. Grizzlies fans know it's the team that gives you the edge. Big River Steel does too. And much like the Grizzlies have recruited legendary talent, we want you to be part of our team. Are you ready to be part of something legendary? Then visit www.bigriversteel.com. That's www.bigriversteel.com. Lieutenant, can you tell us what happened today? Our officers responded to a crash on I-40 westbound this morning. The driver of a pickup truck lost control of the vehicle, veered left, and went into a ditch. 911, what's your emergency? We've been in a crash. Please send someone. My fiancé is hurt. A front seat passenger was wearing a seatbelt. She survived without injury. The driver was not wearing a seatbelt and was ejected from the truck. He died at the scene. Law enforcement writes tickets to save lives. Brought to you by the Tennessee Highway Safety Office. Hey, here's your four grilled cheese double burgers. Enjoy your Sonic. So, could you ever overachieve something? Can you overachieve? No, over not overachieve. Over a cheese. Over a cheese. <laughs> what do you get when you combine two cheesy, craveable classics? The Sonic Grilled Cheese Double Burger. Made with three slices of melty American cheese layered between two 100% pure seasoned beef patties and held together by thick Texas toast. Try one half price when you order in the Sonic app. Exclusions apply. See app for details. Limited time only at participating Sonic drive-ins. HBCU Huddle with me, CJ Hurt, and Mike Wallace has all of your HBCU football, sports, and culture needs covered. We discuss the hottest stories weekly across the black college sports landscape, including the SWAC, MEAC, Tennessee State, Lane, Lamorne Owen, and all the black colleges in between. New episodes drop every Thursday, and you can stay connected with the latest stories and discussions about your favorite HBCU by going to grindcitymedia.com, selecting the podcast folder, and clicking on the HBCU Huddle tab. HBCU Huddle is a spot for all your black college sports and culture needs. Life Care Ambulance is proud to be an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum. At Life Care, they wear their hearts with pride. Their passion is their people. They want you to love what you do and where you do it. Their employee-driven culture encourages a healthy work-life balance and supportive work environment. They invest in your success and well-being so that you can provide the best care for the patients that they serve. Join the incredible team of EMTs and paramedics in Memphis, Nashville, and across the nation today. Learn more at lifecareamb.com. 
At Mountain Dew, we'd like to remind you that the world as we know it would not exist without the number zero. Which is why, at Mountain Dew, we'd like to recognize the number zero for making Mountain Dew Zero Sugar possible. Even with no sugar, it packs all of the bold citrus kick Dew Nation knows and loves. It's so good, you have no reason not to try it. As in zero. Get it? Crack open an ice-cold Mountain Dew Zero Sugar. It's zero sugar. All do. Welcome back to the Chris Vernon Show on GrindCityMedia.com and the Grind City Media YouTube page. Presented by Caesar Sportsbook. Now, back to your host, Chris Vernon. Yeah, better struggle, but we overcome. And hey, at the jungle, man, we at the mud. Like, keep it moving, man, we on the run. Hey, better struggle, but we ain't done. Yeah, better struggle, but we overcome. All right, we're back. Chris Vernon Show. Show's always brought to you by Caesar Sportsbook. And the first bet is on them. You can get back up to $1,250. There's a free bet if you don't win using the code Vernon Full. Vernon Full. Caesar Sportsbook. Go to your app store. Download the app today. It is illegal in the state of Tennessee. Get that app. And hopefully. Uh, Get some winners. I guess the uh, Grizzlies have not only won, but covered in the last three, right? With the Toronto game and then the two over the weekend, Pelicans yeah. and the Kings. And if you so took they've been the, on a heater. And if you took the over on Steven Adams rebounding to prop the last two <laughs> games, I'm not a chance that, that you that. that one easy. <laughs> Safe? All right. Uh, look, all right, we're going to get back into 10 things, but number five is the most important on the entire list, and that is that my beloved friend, Gary Parrish from CBS Sports, and formerly of 92.9, is now moving over to Grind City Media. Oh, look, is that a real background? Or is that like a is that a green screen? Or is that like actually your room? That, this is actually my room. Um, that's that's like that's Broadway right there. Times Square in the background back there. Um, this is where I stay every week. And fortunately for all of us, um, we, we have a cloudy day in New York City. Because if it was sunny, I'd have to turn around and shut the curtains. You wouldn't be able to see all this stuff. But... It's uh, overcast and cloudy, so we can uh, make do with a uh, somewhat nice background, I think. You have to be incredibly uncomfortable even in the in the light anyway. I mean, I, I, in <laughs> fact, one of the first things I said when Gary was coming over to Grand City Media, I said, uh, you know he does those shows in the dark, right? <laughs> I was like, I don't know if they're gonna, he's going to let you have a camera on him. I was like, because he just sits in the dark like a vampire when he's doing them radio shows. I, I sit in the dark like a vampire when I'm doing anything. <laughs> like working, I never turn lights on. I get irritated when other people turn lights on. <laughs> like this is one of the... Uh, the, the battles my wife and I have because she like you know gets into the kitchen turns the light on I'm like do you really need that light on to cook sausage <laughs> I'm not sure you do um, so I'll uh, I'll get used to it but uh, certainly I, I prefer darkness to light but I recognize uh, this new chapter is going to be a uh, video as well and so I'll just have to adjust I'm not I'm not too old to learn new tricks just too old to do some of my old tricks let me let me tell you how mad i am uh, let's just get the jealousy stuff out of the way okay <laughs> okay obviously you got to do a last radio show that was annoying <laughs> <laughs> hey, i got i got i got handshakes and hugs walking out of the building Unbe you walked out like double bird everybody oh, unbelievable <laughs> i mean they had security they like took my keys <laughs> they like Hey, there was there was nothing. They they were like, uh, here, go to HR and make sure that you don't have insurance anymore, and <laughs> and get out. <laughs> I, somebody asked me. They were like, so you and Vernon have now both left. Were those things similar? I was like, no, quite the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, we we didn't even get to we didn't even get to have I didn't even get to say my goodbyes all these years later. I just <laughs> and, and then and then somehow you negotiated into this that the Gary Parish show starts in April here. So now you get to do nothing for like four months. This is unbelievable. They had me on like look, I'm gonna show you something. Hold on. Uh -oh. Where is it? This was like the Chris Vernon show for like the first year. Like that <laughs> setup that you've got with with, with like with like a Tascam uh, record or a whatever Zoom recorder and a microphone and uh, what's that called on a what do we use Adobe Audition? Yeah. Yeah, I had to learn that and I edited the whole thing myself <laughs> because 
The radio station wouldn't let Rosa out of his contract. <laughs> <laughs> and somehow you negotiated, like, yeah, okay, uh, I'll come over there, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about whatever I'm going to be doing in, like, four months. <laughs> Unbelievable. This is... I've been trying to tell you for years. This is why you write checks every month to CAA. They can, they, they can, they pay, they pay for themselves. They pay for themselves. No, in, in the spirit of, of transparency, um, it actually wasn't my idea to not start until April. But we've got a lot of planning to do, and we've got to hire people and um, studio stuff. And the truth is, for people who don't know. Uh, from January through the end of college basketball season, I travel to New York City every week until the Final Four. Like, I'm here every single week w- without exception. And so, um, I don't want to speak for anybody else, but in my conversations, it was like, okay, let's wait to launch a show uh, until we have it planned properly, we have the right people hired, but also until you can be in studio at FedEx Forum Monday through Friday. So, because in, in an alternative reality, you know, I'm uh, doing the first Gary Parrish show on Grind City Media from a hotel room today and tomorrow and Thursday and then back in studio Friday, back in studio Monday, then back in New York. And it just becomes a little disjointed. I think we want to start the show where it's consistent in the way that it sounds and the way that it looks and also give us plenty of time to, to do it right. Because, you know, I, I, I recognize um, you know that this is it's going to be different than just doing a two-hour radio show where nobody sees you um i i think what some of the things i've done that have worked i'll continue to do but um i'm i'm not going to be arrogant enough to think that i can just do what i was doing and it'll um replicate over here the exact same way i'm going to have to adjust and learn and and this gives us plenty of time to, to do all of those things when did it hit you that you're not doing a show over the holidays, because I'm constantly preparing. Like I'm a, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, in some ways an over preparer. I, I, you know, if I got time to spend on something, I'll spend all the time getting ready for it. And so I'm, I'm never just watching things to watch them. I'm watching things and, and, and then saying, well, is this something? Okay, what, do I, what am I going to say about this? What do I want to say about this? You know, how is this? Is this a lead item? Is this something I would do in that 444 segment? And I had several instances over the holidays, college football playoffs, uh, the Tigers game with Tulane, anything with the Grizzlies, where I'm watching it. And these thoughts would go into my head and I go, you know what? I'm not going to have to talk about that. I don't have I don't have anything to say, you know, and that's from an egotistical perspective. I do think I'll miss like not saying everything I want to say every day. But what I will enjoy more than I miss is like having actual free time. Yeah. Like I'm still working full time right now. Like, you know, I'm in New York. I'll be in studio to one thirty tonight. I woke I've already written two pieces this morning, but I feel like I got a lot of free time. Like it's yeah. like, well, what else what am I gonna do with this extra hour? And so it, it's gonna be really nice to 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 work like a normal person for the next few months and then hit the ground running when we hit the ground running. But it is weird that You know, uh, for 13 straight years, and really if you go back to AM 730, 15 straight years, I've been waking up every day and prepping a show and then executing a show. And the idea that I'm not going to do that for a few months, it's nice. It's nice. I prefer it this way, but it's It's definitely <laughs> definitely different. I've explained to everybody uh, a million times, as I have on the air, that like, you know, d- during the time, and this is when I, I try to tell people like that we're not, we were not just coworkers, that we're friends friends because when i left it was better for you for me to stay and yet you said look you're gonna look up in three or four years and you're gonna wonder you're that kind of person you're gonna wonder what would have been like because if you're not going to be able to do the bill simmons thing if you're not going to be able to do something different and then you're just going to resent everybody and then you're going to be miserable and whatever and you know that was you putting me ahead of what was in your best interest. And I have, for many years, attempted to just leave you alone and let you just do the radio. Um, But you finally did make this choice to come over Mm -hmm. here, and you viewed it much differently now coming over to Grind City Media, I think, than you probably did. Look, this is not the first time that we've tried to get you to come over here, right? Like, and, And this time, you did. And I know, look, obviously you're going to be a bazillionaire, but forget the money. <laughs> Outside of the money, look, it, you're going you're gonna to have money. And, and if, you, if you do good jobs, you're going to make money. That being said, 
where you do the show and your comfort level of moving over to something that's not, you know, terrestrial radio, right? You finally were willing to do that. And I'm interested in why now. Um, you know, I, I would say that, you know, to, to expand on, on what you pointed out, Grind City did, I was approached three years ago. The last time my 929 contract was up. And, and for a variety of reasons, I chose to stay then. And I still think looking back on it, that was probably the right thing to do for me and my family in that moment. But this time, it, it just felt a little different. And, you know, as I've said in other places, I wasn't looking to leave 929. I was happy there. I felt appreciated there. Um, I was well compensated what, there. What, is that, what does that feel like? <laughs> <laughs> to be <honest. laughs> <laughs> it, the, it, it, just, it, it, start, it starts with not picking fights. <laughs> mm, mm. Uh, no. I think they threw like, me I a party I, too, Chris. Oh, they they threw you a party. They, they threw a party at Second Line for me. When, what the when hell? I was done. Yeah. Hey, well, I guess yeah. after they held you hostage for a year, they yeah, had to. Like, we'll give you something. <laughs> I never. I, in fairness, I never heard anybody in that building say one bad word about John Rosa. <laughs> <laughs> um. And so when, when, when it came back around this time for a lot of where, where it was clear to me last time, I, I th think I should stay. It was clear to me this time that it was it was time to go. And I would not have brought up money. But you mentioned it. And the truth is, for any of us, um, money is going to play a, a role in that. And without getting into the specifics, and you know how this is. You reach a point at a radio station, uh, particularly a mid-market radio station, you, you're, you're putting a lot of stress on people. And okay. we, had, we had stretched that about as far as you can stretch it. When I came close to leaving last time, I genuinely believe 92.9 did everything they could possibly do to, to keep me to stay. And I stayed. And this time, I genuinely believe they also did everything they could do to try to convince me to stay. And this time, there just wasn't anything they could do. And yeah. so... Uh, I walked out of there, you know, shaking hands with everybody and with with really good feelings. But this just felt like a a, a great next step, um, a new challenge. Um, you know, working with you again is is part of it. Working for my hometown NBA franchise is a part of it. Um, there's just a, a lot of things that made this real. Not you know, going on payroll January first, but not having to work. You know, really do a show till <laughs> April tenth is part of it. You know. A, 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 you know, I, I keep telling people there's not one thing that led to this. And, you know, but, but if, if I started put, when I put a list together and I actually did put a list together because I love making lists um, and it was like pros and cons, the, the, the leaving, there was a lot of pros and v very few cons, maybe not even any. And so I, I do this enthusiastically and um, with great excitement, but not because I was trying to get out of there or looking to leave there. I was happy there. It's just that I was create, uh, uh, presented with an opportunity that, uh, you know, as I've said many times, I know this is vague, but quite simply, it was an opportunity that is just too good for a lot of different reasons for me and my family to pass up. It's also crazy because things have changed drastically since, you know, obviously it's been years and years that I've been here, but, and, and I'm, not, I'm not trying to get into a bash radio thing. I'm not, right? But it has changed dramatically. I was trying to explain to my, to my son. William and I went on a road trip over the break, and I was explaining to him about radio and about I – was, I was actually telling him about uh, Marky B. You know, and I was like, I was like, it's just a different – I was like, when I, you know, when I was first moving here and whatever, like those guys were gods. Like the Drake and Zeke and Stan Bell was on this channel and Devin Wake Steele up crew, and Mike the Wake Evans Up in the Crew. Morning. I mean, the you knew radio all of them. people were the biggest Ron things, Karen right? And Steve. And, yeah, and even even honestly, like even six seven years ago, um, when I left, it was insane to do it. Nobody thinks this is insane that you're doing it now. You know what I'm saying? Like because yeah. this has become media has changed dramatically. It just has. Yeah, there, there is no question that people in the Memphis market still listen to the radio. Like, the yeah. ratings show that. And, you know, the advertising that's connected to it shows that. But th this was a sort of, not eye-opening, but um, 
uh, it, just something that I noticed you know, over the holidays. You know, the night before I was going to do the last show at ninety two nine, we had um, my my mother's. You know, my 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 we we, you know, because my parents divorced when I was a child, we have you know a lot of different Christmases to go to, and this was more my mother's side of the family. So you know, my brother was there, and and my nieces were there. I have two nieces who are in their early twenties, and at some point, my mom was like. You know, Gary's doing his last show on the radio tomorrow, and and I swear to God, one of my nieces said, uh, uh, "I don't even turn on my radio." Like she, you know, she's like twenty two years old, and she's yeah. never turned on a radio. She doesn't get in her car and turn on a radio. She gets in her car, her iPhone automatically attaches via Bluetooth, and then she goes straight to a playlist or a podcast. So whereas, you know, I don't, I don't think there's any question. You know, I'm gonna have to teach my dad. How to listen to the Gary Parish show come April. Um, it, it'll be um, much easier and accessible for younger people because uh, the you know be, because there's a generational thing that's happening right now. Yeah. You know, like when you and I grew up, we would sit down in front of the TV and flip through the channels. My oldest son, who's 19, has a, a television in his room with a direct TV box, every channel available. He literally never turns it on. If there was a way to find out when the last time he turned it on was, I'd do that. And I bet it's been years. My little guys don't watch TV. Never. They watch never. They watch everything on YouTube. They watch everything on apps. And um, oh. I'm aware that I will probably lose some older people who are just struggling with technology. Um, but I, hopefully I will be able to gain younger people who you know, simply got into a habit where they don't turn on the radio at all. You will. All right. Uh, two things before we let you go. Christmas, what were the big gifts for the little ones? Uh, they got a PS5. Oh. Yeah, and it's already at the point where we probably should have invested in two PS5s because now they want to <laughs> argue about whose turn it is to play. So, But uh, PS5 with lots of games. Um, they both got like those Razor electric motorcycles <laughs> and four-wheelers. So Lou got a four-wheeler. He's the youngest because you know, he don't need to be on two wheels right now. Oliver got his, his motorcycle. So those were the, the big gifts. Uh, the motorcycle, four wheeler, PS5, lots of games. This time we we we've as we've gotten older, we realize get get awesome gifts, small number of them, as opposed to fifty gifts that are just going to get lost and thrown away and everywhere else. So we took that approach uh, this year. It was a nice Christmas, though. Is it hard to get a PS5 still or no? Uh, well, yes, because like I went to, I was like. In early December, like Oliver was like, PS5, and Lou was like, PS5. I was like, cool, I'll just go ahead and order this. So I went to Amazon, and I was like, okay, Amazon. And I was like, I was like wow, I didn't know PS5 cost this much. And then I, and I tried to put it in the cart, and they said, we might send you an invitation on December 11th. <laughs> I was like, an invitation? I, like, I, I might be allowed to buy a ps5 that's where we're at so then i found one on like walmart.com and i got it delivered right then and then i got my invitation from oh. amazon and so i was like should i just buy one even though i don't need it and then put it on the secondary market and i was like you know what i don't need to be hustling like that to try to make it. <laughs> i don't need to, i don't need to be trying to uh, sell ps5s on the side <laughs> like i got a new contract i shouldn't be trying to sell ps5s on the side too so um but yes more difficult to buy than say anything any other um you know video game thing that i've ever tried to buy for sure the last thing uh memphis Tulane. obviously memphis took a loss over the weekend i i we were at the game uh we were at the grizzlies game and i was like when I saw the final score, I was like, yo, it was 37 to 37 at halftime. How the hell did they give up 96 points? It's hard to give up 59 points in 20 minutes, but somehow they did. Is that just a randomness, uh, Ron Hunter team, and that was something that, was, something that just kind of happens during the season, or is it like a blip, or is that like real cause for pause, what happened against Tulane? Well, it, it, I do think it's random in the sense that if they played you know, 50 more halves against Tulane, that would never happen again. So that's just something that randomly happened that time. But I do think it's a byproduct of a not-as-good defensive team. You know, they, They're not as athletic as they've been in years past. They don't have rim protectors like they've had in years past. Um, you know, it, you know, you're trying to bring Damari Franklin into the rotation midseason. College coaches will tell you that's very, very difficult um, to try to just throw somebody in there in December. Um, it's why you know mid-year transfers or mid-year additions don't often uh, uh, immediately have a major impact. So there's a lot of things there combined with. And I, I say this not as a shot, just as a fact. They're not as talented as they've been. 
Payton. You know, they've, they've got a great college player in Kendrick Davis, a, a really good college player in DeAndre Williams, and then the rest of the team, like the entire rest of the team, just role players at a place traditionally like Memphis. And, you know, that's why they're, they're good. They're good enough to make the NCAA tournament, but yeah, that's going to happen to them every once in a while um, throughout the season. They're going to lose a game the fans don't think they could lose because the talent gap between them and some of these other teams in the AAC is, isn't as large as it normally is and possibly should, should be. You think they're solidly an NCAA tournament team, though? I think solidly right now, but like, let's talk in two weeks because yeah. the, the problem with playing in this the, the good thing about playing in this league is you should beat everybody except Houston. Uh, the problem is that if you lose games you're not supposed to lose, there ain't really any opportunities for you to get wins you're not supposed to get. Like, right. you, you know, if you play in the Big 12, you lose a game here. Well, you got another quad one opportunity coming up on Monday, and then another one Saturday, and then another one. In the AAC, it's like it, it, you know, it, it is nothing but landmines. It is not uh, almost every game beside the Houston game is going to be a game that can hurt you, not really help you. It won't really help you if you win it, but boy, it'll hurt you if you lose it. And if you lose too many of them, well, then you got problems. Gary, you know, I could not be more thrilled for you to be here. Uh, you'll be on with us uh, weekly until uh, you, you've at least got to do that once a week until you start. I can, <laughs> <laughs> I can do it. I'll, I'll even come in studio. My man. Thank you, Gary. Brother, I love you. I All appreciate right, it. I'll see you soon. Love you too. Gary Parrish, he is going to be part of Grind City Media going forward. Obviously, I am yeah. elated. Oh, it's awesome. Uh, Gary's what, you know, as I said, look, the, yeah, I got very few friends that you have for 20 something years, and he is one for me. So I couldn't be more happy about it. All right, let's knock the rest of these out. Number six. What'd you watch? All right, Kels, your time to shine. All right, I got one. Oh, what? Yeah, one. One like we've been off for like a month. But you watched one thing. I went home for Christmas. I just rewatched the entirety of Seinfeld. <laughs> That's a lot. Okay, Paul T. Goldman. Have you guys heard of it on Peacock? No. Okay, so it is weird. It's literally like there's been articles about it called. The strangest TV show you might ever watch is about this guy who wrote this book called Duplicity. Okay. In what year? In 2009. He wrote this book called Duplicity, and it's essentially his his personal story that he lived through about finding out that his wife was secretly running this like weird sex ring what? behind his, like behind his back. So he wrote this book, and then he's been pitching it to people to try and make it a movie or a show or whatever. And then, so this show is like the, <laughs> it's a comedy. The show is a comedy. It's like the behind the scenes. Is this of, real? Yeah. Well, the story is real. And the actual guy. The, my, the wife was running a sex ring behind his back yeah. and he found out. Yeah. So that story is real. And the actual guy is in this show, but it's like the behind the scenes of him filming the show. And he is a weirdo. Like he's a, he's a weird dude. So like you see him interacting with the other actors. It's just like a weird, it's a weird show. What is this on? Peacock. Peacock. Is it worth watching? I'm only like like three episodes in, and it's 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 interesting because I like that kind of story, but it's like filmed really strange too. Because it's like you're seeing the actual show being filmed, but then you're seeing the film, and you're like walking. It's so weird. I don't know how else to like explain it. It's super super weird. Have you not watched? Have you watched the thing with the colors, the kaleidoscope? It came out. That's the oh. one where you get to pick? Yes. No. You pick the different colors. and then That's you... on Netflix right now? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That is on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's on there. Kaleidoscope. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm doing where that tonight. Where each, 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 we talked about each of us get a color. Yeah. And we watch Have it. Have you picked a color? No, I I No, I just saw that it was on there. Okay, I'm going to pick a color tonight and let you guys know to watch something different. Like, okay. to choose a different. Yeah, we need to do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right? Also, Ginny and George comes out with season two on Thursday. I don't know if you guys like that when it I came out, but it was so good. I don't know what that is. Dude, do you know yeah, what you I, Hey, I, I, you know I'm Trailer King, so I was just watching through trailers and whatever, and I saw there was one. It comes out uh, in like 10 days. It's, um, what is it called? It was a trailer for uh, Breakpoint. Have you seen this? So you know like those you know how like F1 went through the roof and everybody yeah. started watching F1 and everybody started watching like all those races and getting up on Saturday mornings and like they had a favorite team and yeah. all that stuff because of that need for speed documentary series that Netflix did that everybody fell in love with it there's one that's coming out I guess it's 10 days and it's like the same kind of thing where like behind the scenes with the people and whatever 
it's tennis. Oh, okay. So they got the tennis players on there, like a full documentary. It looks awesome. The trailer looks great. Yeah. Mm. And I think they're going to have the, the nutty guy. What's his name? Oh, I don't know. You know. I, I know who you're talking about. Guy. I have no idea what that guy's name Krigos. is. Krigos. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. He it looks like he's on there. The Nick guy Krigos. who flips out all the yeah, time yeah, on the yeah. court. Yeah. Oh, dude, it looks great. Um, but yeah, I saw the trailer for that last night. But that kaleidoscope thing is out. Have you watched the... the I was hoping you were going to say you've watched the, uh, the Knives Out movie. What's that? You know, you never watch Knives Out. I never I saw it. The murder that. mystery with Dan- Daniel Craig. But there's like a there's a new one yeah. called Glass Onion Glass or something. Yeah, it's like a I've Knives Out story or whatever. Oh, the first yeah. Knives Out is awesome. Yeah, I've Glass. heard they're great. Oh, it's great. Yeah. I've been, people have been talking about onions for so long. I didn't know why. This is why. That's it. Glass, uh, gl- or I don't know about this Glass Onion. I haven't watched it yet. But the Knives Out first one, I actually saw that in the theater. It has 7.3 out of 10 on IMBD. Yeah. All right. Oh, 94% on Rotten Tomatoes, though. You got anything, Roser? Nope. You didn't watch anything the whole time? No. Not that I know of. I'm trying to think. No. Sports? Yeah, sports. I mean, and it's weird. I didn't really watch. I, I can honestly tell you, I have not watched one bowl game beginning to end. What? Not one. Me either, Rosa. I don't care about What are you even doing? I have not from... You I, just sit there twiddle your thumbs? You read a book? What do you do? I watch... I watch... Uh, I mean, I watch like NBA games at night. Watch Watch my Nets. You watch should come over and play Catan with times. me. What is that? What? I didn't tell you guys about my new board game. That sounds like witchcraft. Catan? What's that? So good. No. It's Chris like a mix. Catan? Huh? She doesn't know who that is. It's like a mix between um, Risk and Monopoly. It's my new favorite thing. I've played like every night. So what do you do? What's the deal? It's like you roll the dice and you collect like certain, like there's like wood or wheat or brick, stone, and then you can use your resources to like build houses and like build like roads around and you get like points for different things. Played last night, two games, lost both, still had fun. How long does the game take? 40 minutes, it depends. 40 minutes? Yeah, I'd say it was about two episodes. Oh, it's a pretty quick board game? Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm. Catan? Your kids would like it. Catan's fun. How do you spell it? C-A-T-A-N. C-A-T-A-N? Oh, okay. I started to watch a couple things, but I didn't finish them. I started to watch The Christmas Story, the new Christmas story on HBO Max. And I started to watch Black Adam, but I never finished either one of them. Mm. So I've got to go back and start them over. Yeah, I've just... Kept myself busy doing other stuff. All right. Everyone uh, in the comments says that uh, Glass Onion's really good. Oh, I love the first one. I like Daniel Craig. You know, guy that played Bond. Yeah. I like him. I like him in everything I've seen him in, I think. Number seven. Well, here's something to watch. I just had to mention this. I could not believe the announcement <laughs> from FedEx Forum this morning <gasps> that they got... Chris Rock, Dave Chappelle together? Now, I just went. It was the first time I'd ever been to an arena comedy show. Mm, whatever it was. A month that I had, a couple months ago, when we went to go see Kevin Hart. And you would not, I would never turn myself as some, like, Kevin Hart super fan by any means. Or, you know what I mean? Like, I, I haven't even seen all his comedy specials or anything. But certainly he was going to be playing FedEx Forum, and I wanted to go see him. And not only him, but the three guys that warmed up like the crowd or the three comedians that he had with him were absolutely unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. I laughed the entire time. <laughs> he was great. Absolutely great. And I'd never been in an environment like that where I had seen, I've been to a million concerts, but I've never been to an arena, you know, comedy show. Yeah. And I was fascinated with the way it came off. And how much I truly enjoyed it. I mean, you would say, outside of Kevin, the two biggest comedians in the world are Chappelle and Rock. Yeah. And the two funniest guys going. And I can I didn't I had no idea that they were doing something together anywhere, mm-hmm. much less in Memphis. Five shows. There's only five? Memphis, Oklahoma City, St. Louis, Birmingham, and North Charleston. Unbelievable! If they love us, they can just say yeah. it. And so, well, because Chris Rock, Chris Rock also is still on his own tour. 
So Dave so, Chappelle's just hopping in. No, they're doing this. They're doing this while he has a break from his solo tour. We all tour have to go, right? Because Chris yes. Rock, Chris Rock has a solo. His solo tour continues February third. So they're doing this from January twentieth through January twenty seventh. They're doing five shows in seven tickets. days. There's a zero percent chance I won't be in that arena. Yes, yes, I will be in that arena. Yes, I love Dave Chappelle. Oh, and Chris Rock. They are Chris boring. Rock is hilarious. Yes, those two guys together. Yes. That is a I can't, monster. I can't, I can't fathom anything bigger that's not a like a Taylor Swift type of thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I mean, in terms of certainly comedy wise, no chance. Oh, comedy wise, like, yeah, them two would be Kevin as big Hort, as it gets. Who else is really big in comedy? Is Bill Bill Burr's pretty Bill famous? Burr's big, but Bill I mean, Burr's not like big. that. Yeah, I don't know. If Bill Burr could sell. But I mean, I just arena. can't believe it. Look, I think one of them. If you told me Chris Rock was I'd coming, be I'd be there. super excited. Yes. Or Dave Chappelle was yes. coming. I'd, I'd want to go see both of them. Either one. The and fact that they're doing that show together is incredible. It'll and so, be sold out, right? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think it'll sell. It's short notice too. The show's in twenty days. Twenty days. So I would, I would look. I would get on that pre order thing. Well, no, there's like the alert thing. Yeah. There's the alert thing. So I would tell people sign up for that. If you want to be able to get tickets to that thing, I'd sign up for that alert thing so that you get the alert, and then you can uh, get in. But yeah, that's going to be absolutely incredible. Shout out to the bookers here. I can't believe yes. they. It's it just shocking. I couldn't. I didn't. I never even considered that those two would be doing shows together. Um. Yeah. Enormous. Absolutely enormous. Number eight. Enormous also is a good term for Donovan Mitchell's night last night. Oh, my God. Sheesh. Yo. Um, after. So, I start to see when he's got like 50-something. William is watching this in the other room. And then he gets to where he's got like. Oh, he's got 60 in overtime. He comes out of overtime and he knocks down another one. It's like 63, and it's like, hold the phone now. This guy's got a chance at 70. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that stopped him from getting 70, maybe even a little faster, was Karis LeVert. But which, by the way, the only reason it goes to overtime is because he does the intentional missed free throw putback thing that he gets, which was crazy. Luka <laughs> did that recently, too. You've seen some of these. Lucas was wild. He was oh. like falling. Oh, like. wait till you see. Have you seen this one? No, I didn't watch the game. He last night. jumps in the middle of five guys and puts it back in. You know, Don Mitchell ain't yeah. big and just freaky. And you just don't see. I think it was, what, what did they say? The eighth? Is that the eighth 70 that's ever happened in NBA history? I believe. Oh, there's only eight I saw the performances like that. I remember David Robinson did it on the last game of the season. Um, Years ago, and I remember uh, obviously the Kobe 81. Yeah, yeah, David Robinson on the last day of the season in 1994. I was in high school. Um, you guys weren't born. Um, let's see, most points in a game. Donovan Mitchell just tweeted, and just like that, we are drug tested this morning. Wow. <laughs> Wait, what did you say in 1984? 1994, David Robinson. Oh, yeah, I was born. I know. I was ten. Um, I was ten ski. Uh, Elgin Baylor, David Robinson, Donovan Mitchell last night, and then it's Will Chamberlain, Will Chamberlain, Will Chamberlain, David Thompson in 1978, Will Chamberlain, Kobe Bryant in 2006 against Toronto, and then 1962, the hundred point game for Will Chamberlain. I mean, that's all of them in NBA history yeah. ever. Eleven assists, eight rebounds in 50 minutes. 20 free throws made, 25 free throws attempted. Um, and his 55 points after halftime tied Kobe Bryant for the most by any player over the last 25 seasons. His quote was, I think I had a game like that once playing 2K, <laughs> but I don't think I shot that efficiently. <laughs> but that, w that was in a loss, so this feels much better. That's incredible. That's Absolutely incredible. So, 71 points. Certainly one for the history books from De De uh, Donovan Mitchell. And can you imagine a better trade than that? He's got to get player Cleveland, you got to, I mean, he's got to, yes. <laughs> I mean, this guy's he's putting himself into first team all NBA. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you might have gotten one of the best two guards in the league this year. He has been... 
as good a he's been as good a player as there is. Yep. In the league um this entire year. So uh absolutely incredible performance for sure. Number nine. So there's still no most recent update on the status of DeMar Hamlin. Um, There is an update on how the NFL is going to handle it. And that is that the game that was suspended last night after DeMar Hamlin suffered cardiac arrest, arrest is not going to be played this week. The NFL stated in a statement by Commissioner Roger Goodell, that they told the teams the game would not be resumed this week after consulting with both teams and the NFL Players Association. The league, however, has made no decision on resuming the game at a later date, and the Week 18 schedule remains uh, or eight, Week 18 schedule remains on as scheduled. The NFL continues to be in regular contact with the medical team share, caring for Demar Hamlin and also the Bills and Bengals organizations and the NFL Players Association. So Every time you bring this up, look what's on the TV on ESPN. Yeah. They keep watching. Oh, oh no, yeah, it's, it's all day. nonstop. It's all day. It's all day. And look, until you have some clarity on what's going on with Hamlin and is he, you know, I think we're all just praying, like, the, to get that news, he's going to be yeah. okay. Mm-hmm. Like, that he is, he's alive, he's responsive, he is going to be okay. Um, Because it's going to be a long road back. Um, But, I mean, this... We thought... You know, there was that split second, I think, where everybody thought, oh, my God, did a guy just die? In front of us all. During doing what he loves to do. On a football game? In the middle of a football game? Um, scary, The scariest of all scary. He spent last night in intensive care at the University of Cincinnati Medical Center. He remains in critical condition, according to their statement. And so uh, the NFL can make no decisions on what to do. And I think everybody is just standing back and waiting and praying that we get some good news regarding Hamlin before anything happens going forward. Number 10 tonight. So there's only three NBA games tonight, not a big slate of NBA games uh, that are going on. There is a game, if you feel like watching basketball and you want to watch it live, so the Bucks Wizards is on, Thunder Celtics, Kings Jazz. So it's a a bland night. That being said, if you fancy it, you can drive down to South Haven. Yes. Hey. The Hustle have a game tonight. On ESPN Plus tonight, too. Hey! Yeah, good, it's good for you. It is great for me. Because yeah. you're not driving down to South Haven? Well, I'm not driving down to South Haven, but uh, more importantly, I just want to be able to watch it on my TV easily. Fair. Yeah. It drives me crazy when they're on like that GLeague.com or whatever. I can't ever figure out how to get the YouTube link up. Dude, you dude. search for it on YouTube, and, and it's, it's, not there. it's not there. It's like it's like the link that if you go to GLeague.com and it says watch live on YouTube and you click it, it's like a private link that you can only access through the G League's oh, website. Yeah. Which like, is insane. Let's not let everyone watch. No, it's insane. It's insane. It's insane that why you have to you go using through that? that. Why are you using that to broadcast the game, yeah. and yet I can't just search on YouTube Memphis Hustle and click on it? No, it's Or wild. on the G League's channel. It's wild. You would and wa- click you on sh- it. You, w- you should want these games to be seen by as many people as possible. That's what right? I mean. And make it as easy as That's possible. What I mean. It's No. So last the last game that we had, my mom wanted to watch. She said... I said, I'll send you a link when I have it. Because they usually put that private yeah. link up like about five to ten minutes before the broadcast starts. I don't want private links. No, no, no. So I went to, because she'll just watch it on her iPad. I go to click it, and you couldn't watch anything. Oh, good. And I'm even trying to do it during the game, and it wouldn't let me do it. There was nothing. I, during timeouts, I'm like trying yeah, to get it. Yeah, they got to fix that. Come on, G League. So we're so on ESPN. It's a much better product. Get your weight up. Yeah, we're on ESPN Plus the tonight. ESPN Plus, I love it. Because then I could just click on ESPN Plus. Yeah. It, it's, right, it's right there. Yeah, yeah. I might watch from home Capitans, today. Right there. The Capitanes, Mexico City tonight, who have uh, Alfonso McKinney, Shabazz Napier, Kenneth Fareed. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, they got some dudes. The Hustle will have uh, wait, some wait, fun. Wait, wait. You you played this team already, right? Yeah, they waxed. Oh, they're them. awesome. Yeah, they're good. That's they're not awesome. the team that that guy was talking smack to us over in the corner. Some guy was like, first team." I have like he was no like, idea. They they all talk crap. Ah, <sighs> no, this one was no, really they, bad. They all do. Hold on, I gotta look up. That might have been the Vipers. No, I feel like it was this Mexico City. Oh, team. Oh, might have been. 
And there was this one guy who kept talking about how he was first team all G League last year, and he called me a groupie for cheering for the hustle. Oh, a groupie? <laughs> not a groupie. Wow. Sir. And it's certainly not because you cheer for the hustle. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> what was this guy's name? We got guys tonight, though. We've got, we've got guys tonight. We've got uh, LaRavia, Kennedy Chandler, and the two ways, Lofton and Vince Williams. Will both oh. be there tonight. So we got both of them. Yeah, and then they've got players, too. So, like, it's – yeah, they got, they got a kid that played at Arkansas, Mason Jones. He's averaging – they've only played two games since the regular season started back. 35 and a half points per game, like six rebounds, six assists on, like, 70% wow. from the field. Yeah. They got guys. They're good. So you can get on down there. And check good. out the uh, check out the hustle tonight. It's going to be on. Uh, and it's going to be on ESPN uh, Plus, as Roser said. But what time you, is it, Rosie? If you've not seven. been, seven o'clock. Huh? Seven o'clock game. Seven o'clock game. All right. Seven o'clock tonight down at uh, the Landers Center. All right. It's going to do it for today's show today. Thank you to John Rose across the glass. Thanks to Kelsey Wright Johnson. Thanks to Devin Walker. Thanks to uh, Gary Parrish for uh, joining us. And congratulations on his new deal. Uh, we are going to be back tomorrow. Until then, we gone.